Ladies and gentlemen, subscribers and patrons, welcome to this very important show because today you're going to learn how to save your fingers from typing so much. It will be awesome and you will definitely not uh, regret it. I am pretty sure of that. So the problem that we are trying to solve today is that uh, when, uh, for, for instance, I'm creating a lot of uh, demos, so and I'm always writing the same things, and that is really, really annoying that I have to create my uh, my Spring Boot REST controller. That's what I always create. I always create a Spring Boot service. I always create a, sp a JPA entity. I always create a JPA, uh, not a JPA, but a DTO, so I can actually have something to return for my REST controller. I want to automate this. I have already automated that. So there are actually some free live templates that you are welcome to use. I have placed those on my website, but uh, more about that in just um, in just a minute. I just I just want to show you how we start up a project. Usually I go to file and then I say new project and then I choose spring initializer. Then I end up here and then I, I then I take off these um, these modules right here, right? Lumber, Spring Web, Spring Data JPA, and H2 database. So then I have something to store. I can persist some some data and then I can uh, then I can usually uh, create a good demo about some features in Spring Boot or some features in IntelliJ or some features in, in another IDE. Um, as you can see right now, I just want to show this. This is why I did not press uh, create before uh, starting to record this video. I just want to show that the, the current version of Spring Boot is not 3.0.0 anymore any longer. It is 3.0.1. So there have been, uh, yeah, there are some bug uh, uh, fixes and um, especially in the dependence in, in the modules. Um, uh, so I would definitely recommend you to update to 3.0.1 if you haven't done so already. This was just, yeah, yes, that, that was just, uh, I'm not going to, go through the uh, through the differences in this video i might make another video where we go through the differences from 300 to 301 but the problem is that now uh, or not the problem uh, uh, usually then i create a project like this and I, you can see in the bottom then it says resolving then the dependencies of maven and it is still out downloading a lot of stuff and and then, and then at some point then i have a working um, then i have a working uh, then i have a working application like this and then i can press play and um, i'm actually quite happy usually then i have uh, my spring boot application i can add, uh, yeah and then i can um, then i can continue like this and now i have my application and i have uh, yeah there's something that started up but now what i usually do is then i create a space then I say uh, create new, and if you don't know how, how I do this, this is uh, Alt Insert per default. So if you haven't changed your default keys, press Alt Insert when you are somewhere in your in the left side in the project uh, files area. Then you can just press uh, then you can choose package, and then you can write space. So and then I can press Alt Insert again. Then I can say yes, I want my Java class, and here I want my REST controller. I'm just going to pr press R today because. It could be cool that now I can just create my REST controller with all my default lumpbox annotations because uh, I'm always losing. I'm always using uh, SL for J. I'm always using something uh, like uh, I'm always using uh, required Arc constructor so I can inject stuff, construct and inject stuff. So this is exactly what I have already made. So let us go look at that. I have this cool web page right here. Of course, this is already your startup page when you start up your your browser. You start up at codeinvestigator.com, so you get all of these cool utilities. It is a utility website that I've created where you can um, where, where you can uh, you can create a banner if you want to. You can for Spring Boot. You can uh, look at some cheat codes. You can yeah, find the what is for one for uh, HTTP code. Oh, that is uh, unauthorized, etc., etc., etc. You can base 64 encode something. Yes, it is a cool website. You can uh, set up some basic authentication, and you can copy it and then use it in your application. You can. Um, you can you can change uh, your format if you have some XML, then you can then change it to X, uh, to JSON by using this converter right here. You can do a lot of things. But the new thing that uh, I just made is the live templates for IntelliJ right here. So live templates for IntelliJ. What you can do here, you can actually go to SB REST controller, then you can say copy. So now that that is the REST controller, then you can press Alt uh, you can press L Control S for settings. 
then search for live templates, live templates. Of course, you can also use these as code snippets in uh, in Microsoft Visual Code. You can also use it there. The, it's not just for uh, IntelliJ, but I have the variables I made for IntelliJ, I must say. So you have to change the variables uh, by yourself. So let us just, let me just write templates right here. Templates right here. Template here, live templates, that is. And here you can actually create your own group. So you can actually press, uh, yeah, let me just remove that one. Uh, so now it is, uh, you can press plus in the right side. Then you can say template group. And here I like to have an underscore first because then I know that the then I know they will come up in the top. Then I can see my my group right there. And then I use my own name, so then I can see these are custom ones. Of course, you can also figure out something else. You can also name them. Yeah, you can name them whatever you want. Of course. Then I say new temp, new live template, and here comes the cool thing. You can choose a cool operation. This is what you need to write to enable this live template to get the content from it. Then you can say SB rests. So this is a good, uh, yeah, short, uh, yeah, sh short thing for rest controller. You can also call call SB RC. I actually did that in the beginning, but I think SB rests um, is what I'm going to choose right now. Then I'm going to paste. Look, I'm going to paste all the content right here, and you can see the, the I have something called uh, dollar dollar name. This means that I will actually be queried to insert that when I want to create a new REST controller. That is quite cool. Um, so I, I get my default REST controller with some mapping, and here we have some path variables. Um, and of course, if you usually also if you usually only need something more like a query parameter, you can just add that. Of course, there's no problem to do for, do, for doing that. Then you add, then you press define right here, and then you check off Java because this is a Java project. It's, a, it's regarding Java. And then you say, um, then you say, okay. So now we have that one. So that was the first one, SP REST. So what you do, you I just created this new file named R, the new class named R. So I'm going to remove all of that like this. Then I write SP REST like this. And you can see it already actually, uh, it actually uh, proposes this and as an, uh, something you can actually write. Then I press the tap button, the tap button. Then I get all of these cool uh, code right here. Add REST controller right here. The package is wrong, of course. So um, the package, yeah, the package is wrong. So can we, what, what if I do like this package? I think then we have, okay, I have to type that in my, uh, okay, oh, it helps, uh, IntelliJ helps us with that also, yeah. So this is the package, so now the package is correct. The REST controller, why was that uh, not there? Why was that not there? The REST controller, and rotation. It should be there because it is actually, up. oh, I might, let me just check right here. It should be actually be okay because it's actually right there. Org Spring Framework Web Bind Annotation, and then we have a star right there. So that's that should be okay. Let us uh, save this for later on. Let us just save that. Then, then of course, in my in my template right here, then I am always using some kind of service. And then it says, um, please create put in that service right there. Uh, I feel cheated for some for yeah. For, I'll, I'll just do it again because I feel cheated for. Yeah, look here what actually happens now, because now the cursor is, I was, I was a bit too fast as usual. So uh, the, the, what happens is that when you write the, the live template, now I can say that this is my uh, spaceship rest controller like this. And you can see it actually changes all of the places in the, um, in, in the, in the live template spaceship. It actually changes multiple places, right? All, all uh, the places where I had the variable, it actually changes those. And I press enter. And then I'm actually happy, and it also it also accepted the risk controller now. So now, of course, we get some errors because I do not have a spaceship DTO. I do not have a spaceship service. Okay, so how 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 can I fix that then? Then I go to the end of the spaceship service and I press Alt Enter. Then I say, please create the class. Yes, click create create the class. And now I got the class, but do I uh, have some kind of uh, code snippet for that as well? Yes, is answer. Yes, yes, I do. Because then I go back to codeinvestigator.com and then I choose SB service right here. Then I copy that part also. I go back to IntelliJ, then I go to my live templates again, and then I say plus once again, live template. And then I say I want a SB service. 
like this, or you can also make it even even shorter, so SB serve or something like that. Then you say here is the content. Then you say define. This is for Java. Yes, and then you say okay. So then you stand here. You remove the. You can remove the class path if you want to. But if you want to, then you write SB serve and tap. And then because there is a name variable in that live template, then I can write spaceship like this. Enter. Wow, that was cool. Wow, that was cool. So there's a wrong package. I should remove the package actually from my template. I'll do that afterwards. So I should remove the package. Yeah, I should remove the package. The package should be left out. But that's okay. Then I have something to play around with afterwards, right? Then I'm not uh, bored. Okay, again, now now that I have a spaceship repository right here that I usually use in my service. So that, uh, again, now there is a red marking there because that class does not exist. Then I press Alt Enter again after placing the cursor in the end of spaceship repository. Whoa, what just happened there? Now I got my spaceship repository. Pretty cool, right? Uh, again, there's no content. Couldn't it just be awesome if there was some kind of, kind of default template that we can use? Yes, again, go back to codeinvestigator.com. Yes, SP repository, it's right there. Copy it, yes. Go create a new live template. Yes, yes, yes. And then we press plus live template. And what should we name this one right here? This could be SP repo. It is a repository. Yes, it is. And I press Control V. I paste all of it in there. I said this is for Java. And then I press right here. And then I say okay. And then I can remove the class part. And then I say SP repo like this. And then I press tap again. And now again, I can write spaceship because uh, it, again, this is an. Uh, and you can see it's both the entity and the yeah it's it's a variable so it will be placed multiple places. It is also in the it's also in the query. It's quite smart with those variables. I really like them. There yeah it's a huge mistake that I I have those packages. There. I should have removed removed those, but I'll do that as I said afterwards. So now I'm happy again almost because now we have the spaceship. Uh, okay. Now we have the spaceship entity that has just not been created. So I press Alt Enter again create spaceship entity. Yes, create it right there. Yes, yes, yes. Cool, cool, cool. I'll just delete this part right here. Go back to um, go back to Code Investigator. Copy the JPA entity. Then I go back to Control Alt S for settings. Then I find the live templates. Of course, you only need to do this once. Of course, when 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 you have done this JPA E for JPA entity. When you have done this once, of course, you can. This can be used for all of your projects. It is between projects. It's not just for this project right here. Then I press. Um, okay, and then I say JPA E for entity right here. Press tab. Yes, here's my entity. Then I say space yep. right there. So that is quite cool. Again, the package. Yeah, remove that file line right there. Yeah, the packages. I need to remove those. So I have it mental to do on that one. Um, okay. So then I'm actually quite happy, but now I have a DTO I also would like to create. Look look at what we actually get. We get the builder format for free. We get we get the data. I'm always using data for my uh, entities. And then I use add entity, of course, at Arx, Arx Constructor, all Arx Constructor, no Arx Constructor, uh, and uh, build it. We need a new Arx Constructor so we can serialize it. And the same with the all Arx Constructor. That is also, we need those two so we both can uh, convert it into JSON and so we also can, um, yeah, but that, that's actually why. So we need these two right here. And um, so we can convert it back and forth, forth from uh, from JSON. Then we have the add builder right here. That's because I like the add builder pattern. And then we have the entity right. Uh, we always we always we always need an ID right to generate a value. I'm 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 so tired of writing this part these three lines right here. So that was actually what triggered me to create this um, this this live template right here. Then let's go back to DTO because now we need the DTO. I'll copy that once again. This time I'll just use the R file because uh, let's say that. Um, okay, so what do we actually have now? So okay, this is again. You can, you can see the the file name is wrong, but that's that's fine because uh, Intelia will, will actually fix that for us. First, I'll go to my spaceship detail right here. I'll press Alt Enter. I'll say Create Class. Enter. Okay, 
And again, now I'll delete these lines right here. Then I press, uh, then I go to my live templates, and then I write plus right here, live template. Then I write um, BSB, D SB DTO, maybe Spring Boot DTO. But if I named it here, I just named it DTO. It could also just be DTO, but let's be DTO. That's actually okay. It has nothing to do with Spring Boot, actually, it's DTO. So let me just, I'll just write DTO. DTO. I would, like to, I would like to write SBDTO because I might actually use SDTO in other, uh, in another, another context. Then I paste all of it in here. Then I get uh, this one right here. Then I say define. Then I say yeah, Java right there. Then I, then I say okay. Then I write SBDTO and then press tab. And now I have my DTO. In, if you're not using any in my in my demos in my demos, I rarely use mapping frameworks like uh, map structs. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot to write in the spaceship. I forgot to write in the the the, 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 the parameters of the variable. So then we say delete that line again. Press S, Control S. And here we have from entity. We have two entity, and that is because uh, I rarely use mapping frameworks like object map or like the yeah map struct, for instance. So that is why I have this one right here. Then I can have a method that actually converts from the entity to the DTO. And then I have another method that returns, that converts the DTO into an entity. So that is why I have those right here. Uh, now let us go back. So now the last, of course, I have to fill out these. Uh, maybe I should write, uh, add a to-do, actually. I think I'll add a to-do uh, line there. Um, or maybe actually just leave out this code and I will actually get an error. So then I know that I have to. Uh, it's actually okay. It's fine. So, um, then I go back to this uh, line right here. And right now it is a string that is returned. That is, is of course wrong. So here I can now say new. Yeah, just say new like this. Of course, if you prefer to use records as DTOs, um, I actually like to have my classes still, but you can also, some people would actually um, argue that they would like, like to use records instead. But um, I, yeah, I, I still prefer I, I prefer real classes because then I can use that builder pattern right there. Um, I really like that. I really like that. So, um, but of course, you can also you can turn it into a record instead if you want to do that. You can of course change the. You can of course maybe I'll make I think I'll make an extra live template and place up here that is DTO record instead. I think I'll do that actually. So then I have an extra one. Um, okay, but now the naming, the file name is wrong. So what do we do? So compared, to, I just go there in the end of the. Um, I just go there in the end of the. I just go there in the end of my uh, file name, and then I press Alt Enter. Then I say rename file like that. So now the file name is correct. It is very easy to use these live templates because. Um, yeah, the package name is wrong again. I should not have um, let me just delete that. I'll steal the package from one of the others right here. Copy. I need to remove. I should remove all the packages from all of my. Um, yeah, and then of course I don't have to have all of the imports. Another thing you can see right now, the imports are not automatically. Um, they're not automatically cleaned up. You can do that by Control Alt S again. Go to settings. And that's auto save uh, and save actions. Uh, say, I think it's called actions and save. Yes, reform a code, optimize imports. Yes, yes, yes. And um, yeah, run prettier. Why not? I think that's actually a rearranged code. I think that's also fine. So then that, that, this means that if you have some um, member declarations, those will be put on top and then your methods will be put beneath it and your constructor will, will be above your methods and it's, it's a, that is rearranged code. But I actually, I would like this to be globally. It's a bit annoying. I have to set this for each project. But that's okay for now. Um, yeah. This is what I want to show you. I will um, let us see now when I save, then all of the extra imports just disappear. So um, yeah, that's. I think this is very, very cool and awesome. Uh, let me know what you think, and if let me know if you want if there are some things you think should be on my webpage. Then of course I might add it if I think it's a good idea. Um, thank you very much for watching live templates in Telje. Have a great evening. Hope to see you again soon. And thank you for all of your comments, by the way. Yeah.
，拜拜。